What's up, Test Demi family? This is Tim with TestDemi.com, back live and direct for the test automation for beginners, or you can say the Selenium Web Driver course for absolute beginners. So we have a topic today, which is Tutorial 21, and that is exception handling. So let's jump into it, shall we? Let's go! Woo! Come on, let's get it, let's get it. All right, I have my code up. You got to be ready to go. You know, you got to be ready to go. You got to be ready to go. So, um... When it comes to exception handling in Python, there are times when you're writing uh, some code blocks and there are times where you might actually desire input from the user. Let's say you're designing a basic web application and the user might actually have to put some input in, but based on their input, they might uh, actually not put the right information and it might cause an error. So you have to have a way to... Um, handle your code or handle that error in a very nice way that doesn't cause the system to crash. I know you guys have seen sometimes when you try to log in uh, and you perhaps uh, maybe put in the wrong information, it's, you know, you get an exception, a pop-up saying, well, you know, uh, for calendar, you know, it needs to be a certain uh, format or for a telephone number, it needs to be a certain format. So that's the way they handle exceptions, right? It's called exception handling. And exception handling also is also known as errors. Uh, so if there's anywhere where you're writing a, a, a writing code, uh, as far as your test automation script is concerned, and you know there might be some errors, it's always very smart to do some kind of exception handling because you don't want your system to just stop or you don't want your automation test scripts to just kind of halt all at once. Now, Python has, like I said, something called the try and accept clause within Python, and that's used uh, to handle exception uh, within the uh, actual op uh, object op uh, object oriented programming language. Uh, so keep in mind that both uh, the try and accept clause are both keywords in Python. Uh, the try clause handles errors that uh, occur. So let, let me just show you the syntax here. So Here's the syntax, and we're going to actually look at it here in a little bit. But for the try and accept clause, if you're writing the try clause here, which is the first block of code, as you see, as I put down in my notes, if there's no error in your code block, what happens is it's going to go ahead and execute this code. So you're saying, Python, try this code, and if it works, go ahead and skip this. Don't worry about the exception, right? But the key here is, if for whatever reason, this block of code for your try, which is going to always uh, execute first, if it actually fails, let's say the user puts in the wrong input or there's some kind of bug in your code, what's going to happen is going to be a way to catch it. You're going to catch it so you can handle it in a very smooth and professional and uh, wonderful way. So what happens if this fails for whatever reason, this try block, it's now actually going to go into the accept block, right? And you can see what you want to do is you put the accept keyword, you put the exception name, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. And pretty much it says if the errors in the try block fails, this is executed, then, you know, you run the uh, actual uh, message that you want the user to see. Now, Python has a lot of built-in exceptions. Uh, let me show you guys the list here, you know. And the thing is, don't worry about trying to memorize this, man. Don't even, try, don't even get intimidated. Uh, but it's something good to know. And I have the link here. Uh, so you can see here, Python has uh, what's called the built-in exceptions. Uh, they have exceptions broken down by base classes. And you can see the different kind of exception. There's the uh, uh, arithmetic exception, buffer errors, assertion. You guys have probably seen some of this when you're writing your code. Uh, index errors, key interrupt, interrupt, name errors. Uh, you, I mean, you can name it. They have all the kind of errors. So uh, this is a good list to kind of get familiar with, but don't uh, memorize it. All you have to do is kind of know this link, right, for exceptions handling within Python. So you can actually go here and actually reference any of these kind of errors and get a better understanding. You can see the type errors and so forth. A lot of errors here. Uh, timeout errors and, you know, so forth and so forth. Uh, so I'm going to leave the link in the actual uh, comment section so you guys can utilize that and you can actually work and practice. Uh, but it's your built-in exceptions with Python. In other words, how do you handle errors when the errors in your program? Now let's kind of jump back to our code here. Uh, so let's kind of look at a few examples. The first example, um, we're going to look at, pardon me, is uh, let's let's look at something basic. Uh, so let's say we have a string one. Let's say just call this string one. And the string is, um, uh, let's see, string is name, right? The string is uh, name, right? That's the string. And the other string here is going to be string two, which is, um, uh, actually, let's, let's call this first name. Let's call this first string first name, and let's call this second string, let's call it last name, right? So just type along here. 
So what you want to do here is if we run, go ahead and remember, we type the print function. Remember, this is a member of the last video, the print built-in function. Bring up the print function, and if you try to um, execute this code, let's say um, you do uh, actually let, let's let's do this, guys. Just pardon me. Let, let's let's make our tro code a little more sophisticated. Let's let's go ahead and run the input uh, built-in function. So just go ahead and type input, and you're gonna wrap uh, that string in there while you pass it to the str1 function. So go ahead and do string one, and go ahead and uh, do input here, right? And let's go ahead and make this last name. Actually, let's make this age. This will probably be better, and you're going to see what I'm trying to do here. Uh, let's go ahead and make this age here. Yep, let's make this age. Let's give a little space. So you want the person to put that name in the ages, okay? So let's put that in there, and let's say, let's call this integer, int, int1, right? All right, so you want to go ahead and wrap this around in the integer, because remember, with the input function, Python interprets that as a string. So if you want to convert that into an a integer, you want to make sure you use the inter, integer int keyword uh, to convert that, okay? Uh, and if you don't remember, just go back to our previous videos. We uh, discussed that so you can get up to speed. Uh, so you want to put here, let's go ahead and type something to say hi. And we're going to use the we're going to use string formatting. Hi, you know string one. Um, your age, is, your age, is so. Okay, sorry. Your age is. There you go. So what we're doing here is with the string formatting. If you guys remember, and let's go ahead and uh, put our format with string formatting. When you say hi and you put these uh, open and close uh, curly brace brackets, it's going to input whatever the input is from string one here uh, and also for string two here. And But you use string format and you do dot format and you pass string one so you can know to put string one in this first open and closed curly brackets. And you want to go and do integer one, right? Uh, oh, actually, I didn't integer two, sorry, but that's fine. So let's go and run this code and you guys are going to see we're talking about exception handling. So what is your first name? We're going to say uh, Carl. Uh, what is your age, Carl? Carl is 25. So it's going to say, hey, hi, Carl. Your age is 25. So pretty cool. Simple program. Let's put a full stop here. So let's try this again and try to get an exception, right? We run this again. We say, uh, Bill. What is your age, Bill? Bill is uh, 41. All right. You go ahead and run the program. Bill is 41. Great. Okay. Uh, let's try one more time. So now our program is working fine. But what if, what if we have a, a user that says, what is your name? And he says, um, uh, William, right? Name is William. Uh, age and age. Remember, age is supposed to be an integer. But let's say they are not paying attention. They're doing like three things at one, right? At once, and they type in age and they type in um. Uh, let's say hi, right? Ah, we have an error. See that? And it gives you a value error. Invalid literal for integer with base ten. So all that's pretty much saying is that invalid literal for integer it's expecting an integer but you're giving it something else so what you can do as a um, as an automation engineer what you can do is you can go ahead and bring up um uh go back and bring up uh oh, what happened to our oops sorry guys let's bring let's bring it back up here let me just show you what i'm doing i'm bringing google let's say python python exception handling exception list uh so here bring it up and this is a list we had up earlier. I should just use the URL. But you want to, you can just do a search for value. And I did a control H. Uh, okay, that's going to take forever. Let's do value error. And there you go. All right, you can see the value error. It says it's raised when a built-in operational function receives an argument, which is the input, that has the right type but an inappropriate value. And the situation is not described by more precise exceptions, such as index error. So this is going to get an understanding of what it is. So which, the, you know, this is how you... You kind of work through things. You come here, you check out the error message. Uh, you can kind of put this back to the side. So with your exception handle, what you want to do is with the try except block, based on this uh, syntax we looked at earlier, the way it works is you want to put this first block of code in the try exception, right? And so what I want to do is you want to go ahead and indent this. So Python can look at, remember this. Python can see this as a block of code. Uh, so I just do tab, and I can just indent that over. Oops, yeah, uh, there you go. And if you notice here, just like this here, right? Try your code block, the try try uh, clause, your code block, and now um, you want to go ahead and 
run your exception, the accept, accept block. So you see accept block, and what you want to do is you want to go ahead and put the actual error message in here. So if you know you're expecting it, you can put that in there. And now hit enter. Then now here's where you can here's how you here's how you handle your test automation scripts or your code very beautifully. All you can do is um you can say please put in an integer value. Or let's just make it easier. Please put in a number. Please type in a number. Let's just make it easier. All right. All right. So we type in please put in a number. So if we run our code again and we say William and William still this time William comes again. He's not really paying attention and he types blah, 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 whatever. Right. Ah, look at that. You see how clean that code was handled. It said please type in a number. Uh, so that's how you handle uh, exceptions there as opposed to that nasty looking thing that came out. You can handle your exceptions very beautiful and wonderful. You can type whatever here, right? However you want them to, uh, uh, however you want them to understand it so they can actually do it right. Okay. Uh, so that's one kind of exception. Uh, another kind of exception we can look at here is, um, uh, let's actually go ahead and comment this out. And to comment things out, you can just highlight everything and just hit, um, hit control I believe control forward slash there you go control forward slash so hold down on control if you're on Windows and hit the forward slash and it's just gonna comment everything out for you pretty slick alright so let's look at the second exception here and let's say this exception is num uh, let's go ahead and go ahead and, let's go ahead and create a function so we can practice different things we're working on right uh, we can call this function practice you know maybe call your function whatever practice exception right so let's go ahead and uh, pass it some values uh, we're gonna give num one and num two, right? It's gonna be a pretty simple one, right? And remember, don't forget your colon. And you're gonna say you're gonna do a return, and you're gonna do return num one divided by num two. Pretty simple, right? So let's go ahead and uh, run this. So we're gonna do print, and let's remember, you guys, remember, you remember how to run this? I'm gonna pause. Oh, well, moving too fast. I'm gonna still gonna pause. Go ahead and run this, and tell me what you get, right? But if not, we're going to go ahead and continue the video. So let's go ahead and practice exceptions. And uh, if you guys remember what you should do, go ahead and pass your values. Remember, it's expecting two variables, uh, excuse me, two uh, arguments, parameter one and parameter two. And if this doesn't make sense to you, like we mentioned, go back to our previous videos and watch this. So go ahead and put in a value. Uh, we can put 20, right? And we're going to put uh, 40 here. What is it complaining about? Okay, uh, let's run this anyway. I'm not sure what's complaining about. It says type intro doesn't have expected attribute division. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's see. I, I think I know what's going on, but let's just run it and see. Okay. So I went ahead and ran it, but let's uh, let's try something else. Let's do 40. Uh, let's do 40 and 10. Right. Uh, let's see here. So let's go ahead and put this. I don't think this really. It doesn't really make a difference, but hey. All right, uh, let's go ahead and run this. Okay, and do, it does 40. So what if we do something like this? Let's say if we want to run this and we run 75 as our first value. And second value is zero, right? What's going to happen here? Ah, look at this. Zero division error. So a number, you can't divide a number by zero. It's going to give you an error. So uh, what you want to do here is, again, if we go back to our built-in uh, list here with Python, built-in exceptions, what you can do is, you know, you can just copy this. Bring it here. What I did, Control F, Control H, uh, hit Enter till it brings you to it. Oh, there you go. I had it right there. So here's your exception zero division error. So raise when there's second argument. Remember we had a second argument in this case of a division or a module modulo expression. The operation is zero. The associated value is a string indicating the type of the operands and the operation. So all that's pretty much saying, you know, if you try to divide by zero, it's going to raise an exception. So what do we do? So what I want you to do right now, ladies and gentlemen, pause the video and go ahead and put this code in the try and accept block, try and accept clause, pardon me, and go ahead and handle this exception in a professional, in a smooth way, and act like you're getting the input from a user, but they're putting in the wrong values. How are you going to handle these exceptions when you're writing your test automation scripts or if you're doing any kind of program? So pause the video, come back, and continue. For those that uh, are done with it, let's, uh, let's jump right back into it. So the way we're going to handle this is, uh, we're going to do our try, All right? Okay. Uh, you notice Python is complaining because it doesn't like that we haven't indented. So we indent that and we just do accept. And in this case, we're going to do a zero 
division error. And we're just going to say uh, we're going to say here, please type in a non zero value. Non zero value. Okay, there we go. So let's go ahead and run this again. And if you notice that, uh, okay, that's because we have our value here, right? So we have 75 and 0. Notice, let's just do it again, right? Let's do 5 and 0. Okay, and let's go to run this. And see, as opposed to that nasty 0 uh, division error, it came up and said, please type in a non-zero value. So that's a great way to handle it. Let's look at one more. One more exception that's pretty simple and clean. Excuse me. So same thing. Let's go ahead and comment this out. You can just highlight it, hit control and uh, forward slash, and it's going to uh, comment everything out all at once. Let's look at another one. Let's say, um, uh, let's go ahead and do a simple print, right? So let's say print, and let's print a string, and it's going to say, let's go back to uh, hello, um, and we're going to concatenate plus, right? Normally, you know, remember, you know, remember we did hello plus world, right? And it came out like nice and beautiful, hello world. We can actually, we can actually make a space here by doing this space here, and it's going to make it nice and pretty like this. So what if we do this and we say as opposed to hello world string concatenate string, we try to pass in an integer, right? Maybe that's an input from a user. Ah, load this error, type type error. So same thing we're going to do here again. Pause the video, go ahead and try to uh, handle this kind of error message, but we're going to go ahead and continue. So we'll do a try, right? And what we'll do here is accept put that in there and we're going to say uh, we're going to do print and we're going to say please use a string value we're going to say please go ahead and use a string value okay so let's go ahead and run our code again and you're going to see beautiful please use a string value and again if you wanted to do your research you can just copy it and go back to here and look for the type error message. Uh, there you go, exception type error, and it, it breaks it down what the type error is, okay? So that's a great way to uh, work on it and practice. So what I want you guys to do is uh, go ahead and practice, practice, practice. Um, uh, try to make a program crash using a variety of these different errors. For example, here's another one, right? Uh, let, if I just take this, uh, let's go ahead and comment this out. Let me show you guys one more thing. Uh, if I do that, and I try to comment this out and notice this, right? And I go, go ahead and run it. You notice I get a syntax error, right? And again, you can go ahead and handle that also do a try exception with that. So that's one kind of error. And let's see if we do this. Let's see what happens if we don't print that function, right? See, we get a name error. So that's another kind of error. So if you come back here and you uh, type in name error, uh, just type in, you can highlight this here. And uh, you can see the name errors right here. There's a name error, there's a syntax error, which I think is at the top. Uh, we have our syntax syntax error. So a variety of different errors. So go ahead and play with it. Practice, practice, practice. Uh, what we're going to do is um, we're going to keep uh, putting, uh, uploading more videos. Uh, keep in mind, guys, when you're working on these videos, again, we're using a lot of these first few videos because we want to get your foundation as far as your programming skills. In this case, the object-oriented language you're using is Python. We want to get your, uh, your skills deep. We want to have your foundations deep and very strong. So when we actually get to the Selenium side of things, you're going to see how much easier it is because all Selenium is is calling or it's importing the Selenium API, which is WebDriver, which we're using to actually go ahead and uh, automate the web uh, browsers to actually do our automation testing. But the secret is all your code is done in Python. So the stronger you are with these fundamentals, these try exception, if and if and if else if, 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 uh, for loops and while loops and right creating functions and uh, uh, operate op operators and operands all these things we've talked about uh, you will be a great uh, test automation engineer so till then don't forget to subscribe testdemi.com check out the free courses we have on the website and also don't forget to subscribe on the YouTube page don't forget to like it comment and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Testdemi.com. Much love. See you soon. Bye-bye.